Welcome to the McSherry Studio. Don't forget to click the like button and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. And that way you'll get notifications of uh, new painting videos as I post them up. And you can do both using the buttons below here. Uh, so otherwise, paint oils, paint small, and paint often. If you have a question, ask. Okay. Oh. Okay, because I think yeah. that would be that would be good. All right. All right. So yeah. um, don't be self-conscious about the, the the questions because this is all aimed at beginners. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I. So no question is too sort of simple or, or yeah. daft or yeah. anything. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, so what we are going to paint then is these sunflowers. Right. All right. So you can see them clearly. I can. Yeah. Great. And and what we're going to use is this titanium white cadmium yellow pale hue permanent rose cobalt blue burnt umber and a little bit of ivory black okay so uh, we only use the ivory black for making shadows mm -hmm. and uh, everything else is uh, everything else is a mix okay mm -hmm. we'll see as we go along anyway. okay all right so the first thing that I'm going to do is make a wash I'm going to put it over the entire canvas and the wash that I'm going to use today is a burnt umber wash, okay? So I'm going to take some burnt umber, pull it to the side, and use a, kind of a lot of turps. So it becomes like the consistency of, say, milk, okay? I'm just using a large, flat, synthetic brush, okay? So we're going to use this burnt umber for the, uh, for the wash okay. and for the um, drawing. Okay. So... Here we go, so... So what I, all I'm doing is I'm putting on uh, the wash, all right? And the wash ser like serves a couple of purposes. Uh, it will make your uh, canvas come down to the uh, tonal value of your palette, usually. Now the palette I'm using is, is a glass over a, uh, a white surface, but normally I'm using a wooden palette. Um, and as soon as I find a bit of wood that's the right size, I'll stick it underneath this glass so, to give it the same effect. So now we've got kind of a, a toned down uh, canvas. And that means that we can work, because it's mid-tone now, we can work up to the high tones and work down to the low tones and judge them more accurately you know, for, the, for the actual surface that we have. Uh, it's easier to do that than actually be working all the way down from the, this white surface down to uh, the darks. You know, make it mid-tone, we go up to the lights and down to the darks uh, in, the, in the painting. Okay. Uh, it also makes your painting less superficial. Uh, if you see a lot of paintings that are uh, done by or directly onto white, they often, unless the artist knows what they're, they're trying to achieve and what they're doing, they can leave white showing through and it looks superficial. Also th with skies, Skies don't look great if they're painted directly onto, onto white um, because the white sh sort of, it's, it's showing, through the, uh, through, showing through the blue because look, for example, ultramarine is quite transparent and it doesn't look great. Uh, so, and the, there's another reason, you, there's the opportunity for happy accidents if you've got a, a toned canvas. You can leave some of that showing through and it adds something to the painting that's unintentional but often very pleasing. Okay, so that there's three good reasons for putting a wash on your canvas. And also the wash can be any color, as long as it's not black or white, or you don't have, uh, you never put white in it, because that'll make everything that you paint subsequently turn pale. So any of your primary colors, uh, uh, or the earth color, which is the burnt umber, you can, you can put on as a, as a wash or any mix of those. All right, so that's our, our, uh, our wash. And now we're going to do the drawing. Let me just turn back to the... Now, okay, so for the drawing, I'm just going to use pure burnt umber or a pure a mix of burnt umber. Not, still not too, um, still a little bit dilute. Okay, because we don't want it to take over and start getting into our, um, into our painting too much later, leaching into the paint we're trying to put on top. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and let's do a bit of measuring first now. So 
Now, this is going to be a bit difficult because this is a, one of the largest subjects I've ever drawn, and I can't extend my arm, otherwise you can't see, you can't measure. Let's see if I can get a longer brush here. Okay, so if I just put that there and hold it by the, I'm just holding it by the hairs of the brush, by the bristles there, that's about what I need. So that's the full length of the brush. And in terms of width, I'm really only talking about the flower heads. Everything else can come across, uh, fall where it falls. That's what? Three quarters. So it's three quarters uh, the width of its height. Okay. I'm going to stick a, a, a guideline. Uh, I'm going to stick a dark guideline down here for a start, just to, to, to help me the thing there so just divide it in half is that half yeah about that okay so we know that it's going to we're, we're kind of governed by the width because we've got plenty of uh, of height here so if I just do if I say that I don't really want the flowers to come beyond that And then that plus that, that would be about three quarters there. So the height of the thing is like that. I'm giving myself plenty of room because I know that when I start painting, things tend to grow. <laughs> Flowers tend to grow. Everything grows. If you're drawing a person, they kind of start heading towards the edge of the canvas. So give, I'm giving myself some room. Okay. So let's say our entire composition won't come more than that. Okay, we, we've got to fit everything in there. Looks very small, doesn't it? But you, you get used to the actual size that you're drawing at. People start, I mean, you could draw the whole thing on a canvas that's that size, have a little sort of uh, composition down there. Or you could draw it massive. You could, you could have a 40 foot high canvas, couldn't you? And do, but uh, really it's just about the proportion. As long as you get the proportions right, it, it will look okay. So what's in the center of that composition? Let's see where the center is for a start. Is it the edge of that uh, flower there? No. Is it the edge of that flower there in the center? It's more likely candidate, isn't it? It's kind of like that, isn't it? So the edge of the canvas, that flower comes down to there. So let's draw that in. And then you've got that bloom there. It all comes down to kind of like a single L, well, kind of what do you call it, like a, like a pistol shape there. But it doesn't come down to halfway, so it's like that. And then the other bloom, is up here somewhere. So I've already exceeded my my uh, my limit there, but it still looks comfortable on the on the canvas. Okay, so halfway top to bottom. Let's get my long brush again. Halfway top to bottom. Let's see if we can find that out. Is it that the edge of the the lip of the jug there? It kind of is, isn't it? It's the lip of the jug would give us a pretty good steer on that. I'm just gonna sort of change my uh, brush to a smaller brush just to, for, for the drawing part. Okay, so we know that the lip of the, of the jug comes to there. We know that the, the center there, the jug is actually off center. Let's have a look, way, the way that works into the center of jug there and you draw in straight lines don't uh, don't do curves yet and then the handle is quite a big handle that's what's thrown the thing off 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 center is the fact that the handle is uh, is way over there now 
just as a matter of artistic license, you say to yourself, well, is that the way I want it? Is that the way I want the, uh, uh, the weight of this painting to be off to the left there? There are two things that I can do. Uh, I, well, three things. I can leave it as it is and paint it exactly as it is. I can move the jug, twist it around so the handle isn't so important. Or, as a painter, I can just say, I'm going to move everything over a little bit because it's about the weight of the, of the painting. All the weight will be over to the left. It's kind of a notional thing. You know, there's no actual weight. It just seems weighty on that side. It seems off balance. So, as an artist, I'm going to say, no, I want this thing to be more central. The handle can go off. And because it's a, an amorphous shape, it's not... Uh, no one is to know. No one is to know that uh, if Van Gogh's uh, sunflowers, he had the same problem at the beginning of his paintings of, of, you know, he did many paintings of sunflowers. He probably balanced them up just the same way I'm doing there. So, you know, it's further over to the right now. Yes, so good. that's an artistic decision. Handle's still got to come over in proportion to that. Use the rag, get rid of bits there. Okay, the shadow is kind of off to that side. Horizon comes underneath. Okay, now let's do a little bit more with the uh, arrangement of, of leaves. There's a dark coming down there like that. Patterns there like that. <coughs> and everything else is sort of, uh, everything else is, what point I was going to make. Yeah, everything else is recorded there. Can dart there, leaf there. <clears throat> the, 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 we don't need to sort of start painting and getting too involved in the leaves. You, find, you, you just put them in a sort of, uh, as a bit of a mess of, of, of greens. You don't start painting, concentrating on leaves, because it's not a painting about leaves. The f it's the flowers and the jug, really, are the important thing. So everything has got to support those. Okay, so we've got center, the seeds, pod parts there. Now you can't see this, but I can, and I want it in. I can see one of those uh, seed parts there. I can also see, yeah, it's a, I can see a flower behind that one, and I like it there. So that's because. Hang on. Let me lift that for you. There, that's what I can see more. See, the problem is, is the camera is sort of, uh, it's, it's going to sort of drop. But you can see it there. So I, I'll just have to let it drop to, to find its level. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it can't, you can't see like the human eye. Okay. Right. Is there too much glare on that canvas? Mm. At the top there. Oh, at the top. Is that um, very is that very glary? No, it's fine. It's it's just my screen is, but I, I can see it clearly. Okay, good. All right, yeah. good. All right. So we were talking about weight, weren't we? So the weight of the painting, sort of and balancing it out and everything. So some of that can be done with adding uh extra petals to the, the flowers, you know, or it can be done by adding a, a cup leaves or something, you know, so just to, because it's the painting that's important, isn't it? It's not the, um, not the fidelity. Mm. This is what I think uh, uh, a lot of people, where their paintings go slightly wrong. 
they get too obsessed with the fidelity of the painting, uh, unless it's a very beautiful setup, and they forget that uh, it's the painting that's the important. You mean like slavishly following it? Slavishly following it, yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, a flower head coming there. And I've got another one coming there as well. And I can even see a seed head. Well, that's ch changed. Yeah, that one's there. I've got, I can see another one there, and I want that there. Now, you read up on um, you read up on Van Gogh, his sunflowers, and you'll discover <clears throat> specifically on one that I can remember anyway that he did exactly what I'm doing now. It's that later on in the paintings as well. He added flower heads because it supported the painting. They weren't there. He just sort of knew how to paint them by the time that he'd finished painting them and added them in because it improved the, the balance of his painting. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to tamp down a bit of that just so that it's not too much of the of the burnt umber painting. Right, and now let's, uh, I'm going to make up the, the sunflower colors, okay? And it's a very warm red, a very warm yellow, I should, uh, I to, sorry, I beg your pardon. Where's my brush? Did my brush are clean? Right, so I'm gonna grab some yellow And I'm going to put some red into it. It's a very clean mix of just pure red and yellow there. I need quite a bit of it. And paintings are generally darker than real life. Okay, so I've got I've got my I've got a lovely orange there now. I need a dark part of it. And I'm gonna add a bit of red in there okay and i'm going to add in a little bit of blue because some of it is in shadow maybe something like that okay so i'm going to go over to my painting that's the, sh the parts in shadow now on my screen this is showing a little bit sort of um a little bit more brighter yellow than it is in real life it's quite okay. sort of a uh, dark one so uh, but anyway, let's 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 put in the parts that we can there. I'm not following petal forms. Up around here, I can see more. Now they're greyer, they're greyer and bluer around the back, so. Okay, and let's put in some of the bright parts that have been mixed up. sort of why why didn't I actually drew it all right let's put in let's put in so those um, seed pods in the center I'm just gonna use a little bit of burnt umber okay because we're painting a very lean mix at the moment you paint in oil painting you paint fat over lean what they mean is uh, you put the paint down thinly first, then you can work into it with larger, with, with sort of more neat paint at a later stage. All we're doing now is trying to sort of establish the look of our painting. All right, so that's given us a bit of a, a steer there. Let's put in a little bit of uh, green foliage. 
let's make up a a green so blue yellow a bit of red to make it more natural we don't want it to be a too uh, uh, toxic a green so we mediate it with a little bit of red bit of oil help it move around a wee bit and let's put in our uh, get some darks in I want to get some really dark blue let's get a, a little bit of ivory black in there a bit more red I want it to be quite dark a bit of oil help it move around at this early stage of the painting Okay, and let's put in some darks where we see them. That's coming into there. Now the way to make something look bright in a painting is to put something dark next to it. Just bear that in mind. That it's not always a slavish depiction of what is there. You're actually helping the thing along. and put in some of the, the lighter green. This is a very thin bit. This has got uh, a bit of uh, linseed oil into it. It's just to help it move around. Okay. It's still very thin though, Kevin, isn't it's it? It's quite thin, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've got some indication of the uh, of the leaves in there. Now, I think that the, um, the flower heads could be a bit, bit bigger. So I'm just going to move them out a little bit. I know what variety the, the sunflowers that Van Gogh painted were, but some of them were very, very red, his depictions of them. And it might be that he was also trying to sort of just, you know, just give the impression. He was an impressionist after all, of warmth. It's very important uh, uh, in what we're, we're doing. That I was saying this last week to, because we were painting the beach and, uh, you did see some of that, didn't you, uh, Mary? Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Your, your daughter at the little cove. In, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Costa, Costa Blanca, was it? or Costa, uh, Costa Brava. Brava. Costa yeah. Brava it was. But the whole painting was about warmth. Yes. You know, rather yeah. than the specific place that we were in. The, the specific place that we were in was kind of like a, um, a hook to hang all that sort of warmth on, if you yeah. see what I mean. So it's a painting about warmth rather than a painting about a specific place in Costa Brava. Yes. It's a, good, it's a good way of thinking about it. Makes you feel as if you're there. It, exactly. Well, it makes you want to sort of go swimming or yeah. get your togs on and, and you know, uh, and get to the beach, that kind of thing. So paintings are about evoking things like that rather than um, slavish depictions of, of, of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so... And I think that that's what the impressions did most, uh, uh, did best out of everybody, is uh, evoking, evoking yeah. uh, uh, feelings. Right. Let's do the, let's do the the vase itself. Right. I'm just going to go down. I'm giving myself an idea of the, of how the pattern falls for a start. So I'm just going to mix up myself, mix up a little bit of of, of a reddish kind of blue. bit of oil into it and then let's go back to our painting and just sort of I just want to use that to so I'm only just putting in little sort of spots where I, where I can see how the 
flowers go. This will give me an idea of how to approach the th approach the uh, the rest of it. Let's put in an indication of how the the handle goes, and then there's a top of the jug there. Okay, in that. I'm going to mix up a, a little bit of uh, a light green for that glaze now. It's a light pale green. Oh, I didn't give myself a hang. On. Let me just put that. I just put down the, uh, the the rim at the very bottom. Right, so a pale green. So yellow and blue, which would give us a green, and a bit of white, which would make it pale. It's a pale yellowy green by the looks of it. You can always do this as well. Okay, you mix up your colour and you check it against what you're painting. Okay. So that's not far off it there. Not far, actually, it's a bit bluer than I originally intended or originally thought. touch of blue into it. Okay, now, uh, the part of it's in shadow. So it's going to put in a little bit of ivory black just to make a shadow. We only use the ivory black for shadows. A little bit of oil into it, help it move around. Make a little bit more blue into it where it's shadowy. I always do my mixes incrementally. Right. Yeah, so you don't sort of make a massive change once you have to sort of go back over. So the shadow is kind of down under there and to the right, I think. So there. Maybe a little bit there and underneath the spout. There's a bloody great leaf there that I didn't even notice. So I'm going to put that in just before I forget about it there. Right, and let's put in the light part of the green. So can just take a little bit of care to leave a bit of space for the uh, for the pattern. It's a great little jug there. I, I don't know if it was a big jug. I can't remember where I got it. It was probably a charity shop somewhere. Yeah. But they're good to have around. I think I'd have picked a, a jug with no pattern. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see what you mean. I know every time I approach it, I think to myself, oh, God, not this jug again. Yeah, but it makes it more interesting. Yes. So now we've got um, uh, most of our jug in. Let's try the white parts of the jug. So we're, not, we're going to make something that isn't white, but uh, uh, it tells people that it's white. So, so white, it's slightly dark. Well, it can't be as, as white as white because we... We need to put in a couple of highlights at the end. So it's kind of a slightly yellow. It's probably reflecting a lot of what's around it. Well, it is, and a lot of what are, is around it is green. So there's a bit of everything in this, but it's got to be able to show highlights. Mm. I'm going to put, even put a little bit of black into it just to knock it back. All will become clear in the end, I suppose. All right, so. Okay. Uh, down there. Oh, and there's a, a kind of a yellow sort of 
on the stand. It's kind of a, a very pale, cool yellow. In fact, you can see it down there. So I'm, I'm just going to sh just show you the, the mix that I make. So it's going to get some yellow, going to get some white, tiny little touch of blue. It is a cool, cool yellow. Something like that. Put that in there. Right. Let's do let's do the foreground. The foreground is a kind of a manila colour. In fact it's it, it's it's on a, a bit of wood. So let's make up a, a kind of a wood colour. So get a load of white. Yellow, red, and blue. It is slightly warm, so that that is actually not too bad, is it? Let's check it. See if we've got something that's kind of more or less what we want. I mean, you probably can't see it on the computer screen, but it's useful to see me uh, doing this kind of thing, okay? Uh, go back to the mix palette. Okay, a bit redder, I think maybe. Okay, but there's also well, make a bit more. Actually, making enough. Paper. Are you still keeping everything very thin, Kevin? I'm still keeping everything a little bit thin. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> No, it is. It's a good question because uh, I, you know, I don't know what you don't know, and it, it's good to yeah, to hear yeah. it. Yeah. All right, so maybe something like that. Okay, and then we need a shadow of that because there's a shadow being cast, isn't there? Uh, off to the left. I'll show you in a moment. But I'm going to make the shadow a little bit of black, a little bit of blue into the same color. I'm using the same color yes. from which to to make my shadow. Okay, and maybe the shadow is something like that. So I've basically got a dark, greyer version of this. Yeah. And we'll apply it then. Okay, so up around here. Kind of comes around there like that. And it's round the back here too. And it comes around there like that. And now let's put in the part that's in light, which is towards us. And we've already made that up, haven't we? So Let's put that in. It has a bit of oil in it, so it's just easier to move it around at this stage. Yeah. Just a little, you know, little sort of part. Slight dilution. And you're almost scrubbing it in, are you? Well, I'm just trying to cover a lot of area very quickly. Yeah. I'm not paying attention to the strokes or anything at, at, at this yeah. stage. Okay, so I've got that sort of uh, push in. Now we've got the background, haven't we? And the background is uh, a kind of a, a mid lightish blue tending towards green. All right. That's the way you describe colors. You're describing them, describe colors as if there's a color wheel in front of you. And, and you say, oh, this, this blue is tending towards red, or this blue is tending towards green, or this blue is right at smack bang in the center. Okay. You know, and the same with yellows, it's tending towards red, or it's tending towards green. Uh, you know, and uh, what would it be? You know, reds would be tending towards yellow, and, or tending towards blue. That's the way you think about colors. Right. Yeah. Right, so let's make up a background color.
Hmm. But so there are a couple of considerations, aren't there? Same as usual. Uh, what's the colour that it actually is? And we kind of more or less described it, didn't we? It's a mid, it's a mid to light blue that's tending slightly towards green. Don't worry about the spots in the background. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, but then the, the other consideration is, well, what, what, what do I want the painting to look like? So it might be a ready green might be better. So a ready blue, sorry, I beg your pardon. So let's, but, let's make up. Long, yeah, well, just because eventually it'll come down to be, uh, to, you know, well, what do I like? What do I want for this painting? And it might be darker. You might want it darker. And I'll tell you why. It's because dark things make uh, bright things look brighter. You know, if yeah. you put something, if you want something to look bright, you put something dark next to it. Yeah. And if we put a darker blue in there, maybe that will show up the, the flowers a bit more. So that's yeah. the other consideration. Yeah. All right. So let's start out and we'll make it a little bit sort of the way it actually is and put a little bit of oil into it so we can move it around. I'm a terrible man for not making enough paint. There's me telling everyone to make enough paint. There. Maybe something like that. Which is actually darker than it actually is. There's also a, a part that's in shadow. And you can see it. You can see it there behind the handle. And just yeah. underneath the, the, the spout. Okay. Alright, so uh, I'm going to put Make a little bit of, put a bit of black into that. Maybe put a bit of blue and put a bit of red into it. That'll make it dark. Okay, that's darker than the other one. All right, so let's, let's put that in. And Brian, uh, actually, if your microphone is working, I, I said to Mary earlier that, uh, you know, if there's a question that you have, say it, because there's only two of you there and it's not going to cause... Uh, feedback or anything like that so um, and no question is too simple okay all right so let's go back to our painting and we'll put it in where we see it there's darks under a darkish sort of part under there I am doing it quite dark, aren't I? Let's have a look. A bit there. Let's make it a little bit dark over here as well. Now you probably notice that I'm not exactly following what's there because it, it is the painting that's important. Now, I'm just going to put in the lighter colour. Put that in. It's got a bit of oil in it, so it, it kind of moves around fairly easily. Oh, somebody's got a cup of coffee. No, that's me with my... I'm, a, I'm desperate. I, I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's... Uh, Crack on here. I could do with a cup. Only when you stop recording. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Hope it's not a gun. Right. No. There we go. Okay. So we're putting in the background. I think that's the fatal flaw that many artists make, uh, and including myself, is is being too faithful you know to to whatever it is that you're you're painting mm. it's got to have you in it it's, you know it's got to be something that you decided mm. I, I suppose you feel safer when you're yes that's exactly what it is it, it, yeah. it's it's sticking with the known uh, yeah. and yeah. see i'm even giving a little bit of indication of of, of how the the petals will be recorded 
Uh, and that is exactly how they will be recorded. You don't paint individual petals. Uh, you, you, you sculpt petals, okay? Okay, so we've got that sort of more or less put in. You can even see it through there. Right. So that, in fact, is our painting blocked in. Right. So from now on, we. There's not. Are you seeing a glare on the top of that painting? Um, yes, at the the right hand right. Wait, tower, I think is just very. Give me two seconds. I'm going to turn off the strip lights behind me. That, that, that I think that that's what what's causing it. Hold on for a moment, please. Yep. That's much better. Yeah, I can see the definition now much, much better. Yeah, yeah, that was really beginning to bug me there. Right, so now I know what to do. We'll deal with the, the petals a little bit because they're the star of the show, aren't they? Um, a brighter yellow, and we can see it in here, can't we? And I'm still not, still not sort of following the uh, direction necessarily of the of the petals and was that just yellow and white Kevin that was yellow and red yellow and red yellow yellow and white would make it pale okay and we want bright it's okay. different and yeah. um, and people often get sort of uh, uh, confused by that Now I'm using heavy paint here, that this is undiluted, undiluted paint there. This round here is bright. Put that in there. You have a lot of paint on the brush, Kevin, have you? I have you? a lot of paint on the brush, yes. A la Van Gogh. Okay. Well, why not? He was a great painter. Taught in my school. Van Gogh did? Yeah, apparently he did, yeah. Oh. Or a, a version of my school, oh. which was, uh, it, it moved from one part of Iselworth to another part, and he was there as a maths and religion teacher okay. for, for one, one summer, I think. Probably got kicked out. Yeah. Okay. So let's leave that uh, for the moment and let's do something with the leaves. So we had that, um, we had that green mix, it was there. I'm going to make a bit more, okay? Bit of red into it. Bit more blue into it. It's quite dark in places. All right, let's go back to the painting. Temptation for me is to start painting what's on the screen and not what's in front of me, because uh, the screen I, I can see just as easily as this. Yeah. So, petal, petal, petal. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's not painting petals, you're sculpting petals. Yeah. Here we go again. Petal. A loaded brush. Petal. Make 
make sure that, that that's all covered. Bring that down there for balance. Let's go to our, <laughs> our jug's got considerably darker since I turned the lights out. <laughs> but we are, we are artists and we'll cope with, with the, uh, the change in the environment. More petals. Push that paint out there. Now, yes, let's go down to the pattern. And we have that sort of white that isn't white. It is quite dark. Let's grab a bit of it and start describing it down here. But you don't describe it sort of Pin, with pinpoint accuracy. I think that way you're inviting trouble. You just put it in as a kind of a, just a suggestion. You suggest in painting. And if you look at Van Gogh's uh, own paintings like that, they were considerably uh, less detailed than I'm doing here. And the temptation is to go too light on things like this. Okay, so we've got some indication of of patterns there and there. Right, we've got Nucci here. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody headphones, all warm. Right, so what should we do now? Let's, let's make something more of those, uh, the centers of those flower heads. They're darker, aren't they? They are quite dark, but quite, They're very dark, quite, yeah. quite red, greenish in the middle and they go red as they go out. So let's mix up a dark, very dark, dark. Darkest dark, I suppose. Well, not quite, that's the darkest dark in there. But anyway, there's not much in it really. So let's put blue, burnt umber. That gives a really dark, warm dark. And then a red version as it heads out towards the petals. All right, let's put that one in first. That one is all very dark. Don't skimp on the paint. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do you any good to, to skimp on the paint. Okay. And it's undiluted still, is this it? Is under, well, now it's going to be undiluted practically everywhere. Okay. Everywhere I'm going to start. I'm just pushing that out. I'm pushing out the paint because this part here is turning away from us. Well, it's turning down. And this part is, is, is more, we can see more of it there rather than just having sort of a a circle a, a daisy like circle and you know that child would draw or, or i would <laughs> <laughs> well most people don't progress beyond that really uh because it starts at school is that everybody gets sort of uh told to you know draw up to the lines yeah. <laughs> and uh and then we'll 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 see if you're any good at it and of course they call that art and really all it is is a metric for discovering whether a child can hold a pen or not and, yeah. and control it. And, but people get stuck at that stage. They never move on from it, yeah. including, you know, art teachers. So everyone sort of leaves school thinking that painting is drawing up to lines. 
doesn't help. Do you or, mean like in, in gridding? In gridding? What do you mean? You know, painting up to lines, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you get a picture of, you know, an elephant or a horse and it'd be just a black line. And, you know, when you're five years old at school, they tell you, well, paint up to the, you know, you know, colour it in. It's actually more colouring in they're talking about uh, uh, when they're colouring it. You're colouring it up to the lines. And right. then they, you know, then they say, oh, that's very good. Or, oh, look, you've gone all over the bloody place. Yeah. You're, you're, we'll have to send you to the remedial class. <laughs> This didn't happen to me, I have to just hasten to add. <laughs> I was okay at that sort of kind of thing. So I'm just sculpting in those petals again. Are you touching it very lightly so you don't mix with the paint? Uh, okay. Yes, what I'm trying to do is just, the brush is loaded. Okay, the, yeah. the brush is loaded up. Uh, and I'm trying to just push the other paint out of the way. Okay. Okay. And, the, and that gives the, the impression that there are petals there, individual petals. Now it also does, because it's blue here and yellow here, create a kind of a green halo around the, the, the thing. But that's art. Yeah. That's nice. We want that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. that kind of thing. It's it, it. This is that's an unintended consequence. Mm. Yeah, and it's not a slavish uh, depiction of reality anymore, because all these things are happening. That uh, almost that it, it, that you're not really controlling, or you're kind of controlling, but only in a. Mm. It's it's like an aura. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, these are special sunflowers. Yeah. So around about sort of, uh, well, I'm, t I'm doing the white here. Around about here, it actually gets a bit pink. I'm not quite sure why, but it, I can see it there. And it's worth putting it in. So I'm just going to make a pinker version of that not quite white that we, we made earlier on. If you see what I mean. You've got to look out for these things. It's just reflecting something because it's ceramics. Ceramics is very highly reflective. The glazes, all right. So, can I see it anywhere else? Can I see it in that pattern? I suppose I can. It must be there. So I'm going to put it in. My intention for this is to make it kind of like midway between the Van Gogh style of painting and the old master style of painting. That's what I'm aiming for. Whether I achieve it or not is another matter. But what I don't want to do is become overly specific. It won't help me. I'll just bring all sorts of problems down on my head. That's going to reflect like that. Okay, let's sculpt that uh, ellipse down here. Now I'm putting my finger, you see my finger? Yeah. Just that I'm just putting it on there, rotating around it and that's, have you ever heard of a mal stick? I have, yep, yeah. That's my mal stick, it's my finger. It's like I'm on yeah. the lip of, of my uh, my little box easel there, and so that means I can steady my hand. So my hands aren't particularly steady. Putting that in there. Let's put in an indication of some of the stuff along there. All we're doing is indicating that there's pattern. We're not going to start getting down into the, the minutiae of that pattern. You'd be here all bloody day. Mm. It's an impression that there's a pattern. Yeah, 
around there. There's a dark there. Okay. Heaven, was that, is, did you say that's a number five? No, mm -hmm. this, this is a number one. So it's tiny. It's small. Yeah, well, don't forget, I'm yeah. painting on a seven by ten. Oh, yeah. Board. Yeah. I mean, you can see it compared to my hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's those little yellow dots there. Now, let's do something with the, the shadow, because now the shadow, in fact, is, is more intense than it was before. So I'm going to use that same shadow that I made up uh, earlier on. Uh, if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Just make it a little bit more. Sharp. Cooler. Okay. That give me an opportunity to sculpt in the, the jug a little bit better. And that's good because now that that's darker, it kind of helps with the uh, with the flowers to to make them uh, mm. seem a little bit sort of brighter. And are you still undiluted? The brush seems to be moving very easily for you. Well, it is because the the, the paint underneath has got uh, a fair amount of oil in it. Okay. So it just helps everything just move around a, a, a little bit more easily, which in this case I'm glad of. Sometimes I wouldn't be. Yeah. But right. um, okay, now it comes across there like that. Now, is there something that we can do with the with the background? And I'm just looking at it now. I love that uh, turquoisey effect that I've got uh, from around the flowers. Yeah, the flowers pushing. are really standing out. Yeah, least. yeah. Well, see, it's in that, but there's something that the, that's really nice about the turquoise. So I'm just making up. A, I'm just making up a, a, a blue, which is quite sort of turquoise. I probably put a bit of yellow into it. It seems it seems to want it. So let's see, I'm gonna, I, and that means I can shape, I can shape some of this stuff around here. And it's nice to have uh, lively backgrounds you mean vibrant? Yes, vibrant, but but lively in the sense that there's more than one colour in the background. You 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 see the you see the background as a kind of a single colour. But yeah. you're better off in a painting as if it's got if it's got other sort of uh, shimmering sort of uh, effects in it, like you know you could. Yeah, have, it wouldn't look so flat. Yes, it? it wouldn't look yeah. flat. Exactly right. Yeah, uh, lots of paintings tend to look flat people don't pay attention to uh to devices like like that it's, it's a device rather than you having fantastic observational skills and seeing them there necessarily you know it's practically impossible to to do things like that by eye but so so it becomes it comes with experience and uh and once again, what you want to make of the painting. What do you want the painting to be? I'm even bringing some of that background down into the foreground. That will help the thing too. It will make the, the shadows a bit more lively, I think. And also, I mean, in, in reality, the foreground will be reflecting the background. So it's good to have it in there a little bit. Now I'm going to do something with this corner here. I don't like it. And I'm also going to make the, I'm going to make this sit in a pool of light. I like that. I've always done it. And uh, it's something that uh, I, I just 
do. So rather than be uh, copying exactly what's there, I want this to, to, to be light and then start darkening at, as it goes out to the edge so that all the focus comes in on what's in the center. So I'm going to make the, the foreground a brighter, maybe slightly paler version here. Let's, let's try it here, and that includes here. And this is a slightly yellower version of the same thing, yellower and slightly paler. See, because painting is all about uh, making your marks and giving yourself the opportunity of changing them subsequently. Now, if you don't overdo the paint, first of all, if you get the generality in with a kind of a, a bit of a dilute mix and you know, you've blocked in, it gives you the, uh, the opportunity of, you know, of changing it uh, later without causing yourself problems. Like, a, the, your, your, I think if you get it sort of within, I don't know, within 20% of where you want it to be, you know, at the blocking in stage, you know, so that you know that this area is going to be a kind of, the kind of tone of blue that you want. Uh, you, you've established the tone and the colour of the flowers. You've established the kind of tone that you want in the, in, in the foliage here, and you've established where you kind of want the pattern to, to be on your ceramics and you've, you've established the general tone and, and hue around uh, your foreground. You can push it out within reason, within 20% to something else. You don't make radical changes, in other words. I'm not going to change that blue to a red, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you just get mud. That's, yeah. that's, that's what happens. So it, I suppose it, re it requires just a little bit of planning. I'm going to do a slightly redder, lighter uh, warm for the front now. Because I'm warming to the, the, the idea now. That was no pun intended. It, it, you know, it's about warmth, but uh, I'm, I'm still sort of on this idea of the pool of light. And I'm just putting in little dabs now of, of it just concentrates the eye over here. Greys are no bad thing either. You know, you, you can you can a subtle use of of of, of greys as well. So I'm going to get some of that background and mix it into the foreground, just to have. How do you make a grey? Well, <clears throat> a grey is any of the. Hang on, let me show you. A grey would be any of those or all of those mixed together with okay. white will give you a grey. Like okay. you could make a grey between the black and the white, and it, but it will be harsh. Okay, You yeah, wouldn't want that, to use it, yeah. right? Uh, so you make your greys from colors plus white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what you do then is you, you, you vary the, uh, the amount of any of these into it yeah. to push it towards the, the hue of gray you want and the temperature of gray that you want. And is brown the same when you make your own brown? Yeah, brown, brown is kind of um, brown is a, a, is generally a warm kind of a yellow, isn't it? A very dark yellow. So I mean that would that would be that would be all of those three. Yeah. But I mean you could make brown by mixing the red and the yellow with a, and put a bit of blue into it. You wouldn't okay. need any of the white. Yeah. Because you don't want to make it a pale brown, I presume. If you wanted to match your um, earth colour here, your burnt umber, yeah. you would mix those two together with a bit of that. Okay. It's quite hard to get close to that, but it can, you can emulate it. Yeah. Okay. Let's get a little bit of grey into that foreground. And that, hopefully that, the idea is to, is to heighten the sense of warmth here by putting something a bit 
pool into here. I'm just going to put in little dabs out in the further sort of uh, parts of the foreground. So now we've got mixes of warms and, and, and cool parts in the foreground. That's just a for effect. I can't see it. Well, I can, you know, if I look hard enough, I can start to sort of convince myself that I can see it there. But as you go move uh, along further in your painting, you, you stop looking at the, uh, the model and you start concentrating on making the painting what you want it to be. The concept of the painting, I suppose. The concept of this painting is what sunlight, isn't it? And now let's uh, let's let's work on the the flowers a bit more again. And so we're back back to using yellow and red. Pure, un, uh, undiluted. Putting in the tips of some of these. Flower heads. Extend those out a little bit, I think. Oh, over here, there's some uh, work that needs to be done. Move that in there, like that. I'm just putting in little spots of uh, paint. Well, I see it in there. What I liked about Van Gogh's um, sunflowers is that how unruly they are. And I really just love it. There must be a variety of, uh, of uh, sunflower that was around where he was living. They're very messy, lots and lots of... Not neat. <laughs> not neat sunflowers. And uh, I, I, I just love them. And I did see them around one time uh, in Ireland. Got, Maybe they're know, ones that grow wild rather than the yeah, cultivars. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Maybe that's the, the, the problem is that... Uh, it's like perfect potatoes and perfect tomatoes. <laughs> you, you're, you're bang on there, I think. That's, that's what it was. These things are cultivated for flower shops or growing seeds for consumption. Yeah. It's just a crop. Just putting in some shadows there to support the uh, the idea of, of sun. We need sun, don't we? My God. It's, been, it's, so, it's freezing. <laughs> I, I, I lit my fire this morning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Am, am I ruining the, the, the magic now by saying things like that? <laughs> no, you're, you're oh, relieving it. It's really sunny here in Kimmage, I can tell you. Yeah. Should move here. Nice. I'm just putting in some um, support the fact that that's uh, a separate flower head, and uh, and here too. Now, are there any other sort of uh, things that I want to put in there? There are some uh, some slightly grey versions of the uh, of the sunflowers. Cool, cool parts in those where they're turning away from the sun. Uh, uh, the, the sun, my light, a little bit. Uh,
on that to show a little bit sort of and there's a kind of a very this quite pale sort of green ring I'd like to put that in as well can I see it here I'm going to put a little bit of a tonal variation in there now there are some Some shadows being cast, uh, shadows being cast by itself onto its own petals. They're worth, they're worth putting in. Especially since I turned out the the, the strip lights. That'll give it a little bit of uh, definition. And a red. Mm, a red darkish dark there. Maybe down here as well. Push that out. Now, what about something in that background a little bit interesting? Let's put uh, some pinks in the background. Mm. <coughs> And see if we can incorporate them a little bit. This is just pure um, burnt, uh, white and permanent rose, and we're going to put them in. But then we're going to uh, we let them disappear into the into the blue a bit more, it's just to have a little bit of variety in the background. because it is like a, a sky. Let's get a bit more, make a, a warm version of it. So white, yellow, and, and um, permanent rose. This is a brighter one. Put that in there. So, oops, I'm going to put that in here as well. All right, that's there, right there. We can always deal with those later with them. Now let's go back. I'm going to go back to my slightly larger brush. And I want to get some of that turquoisey blue on my brush and then just, just work those in a little bit so they're not so obvious, but they're there. So the whole. Uh, Lovely effect, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. So basically, yeah. this is the, the liveliness. So it's not just a, it's not just a plain yeah. background. If you look closely, then you start seeing, oh, oh, there are other colours in here as well. I'm not sure what to do with that. Is that worth keeping in? Take it out. Little dabs, mm. but not flattened. It's not flattened. If you look at it closely, you'll just see little puckers of of, of texture. Yeah. 
You're just touching them I'm lightly. Just touching them lightly to to splay them out and uh, incorporate them into the background. Yeah, it makes it dreamier or something. It just makes it less um, boring. Le it's it's boring. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Because the painting is magnificent. <laughs> oh, it's very difficult to come back from that one there, Mary. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll never forgive you for this. No, I'm joking. You know what I mean? Like a really yes, I do. Of course I do. Yeah. background. Yeah, yeah. well, it's ex exactly what I, I'm, I'm, I was trying to get across. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you've, you've uh, absorbed it. And that, that's, that's it. Whenever you have a plain... Uh, a plain area well i mean th there's different ways you can treat things of course this is the the way that i'm suggesting or I, i'm treating this one there are beautiful paintings where everything's as flat as a pancake mm. you know and uh but you know that will be somebody else's response yeah to what they have to do yeah. and th that's that is absolutely beautiful too and, and it's wonderful to to see it mm. um it's just this this is the way I, I sort of felt this morning, so yeah let me just grab that a little bit of white into that blue a little bit and so because people will will really only see the turquoisey kind of blue. It's only when they they sort of go up close to it they say, oh, there's lots in here. So it's kind of slightly pointillist, but it's not pointillist. I don't know what your way you would sort of des describe the application, but uh, the painting is the important thing. Yeah. Now, I suppose I better do something with the the jug, hadn't I? Just to. finish up there like that let's move that so that it looks more like a I am a bit of an obsessive completist I have to admit which is you still like the more wild or natural look don't you which well I I, I like it it's just that I, I I keep on not doing it you know I keep on sort of uh working at things until they sort of look as perfect as I can get them, then I have to stop myself. I always have to stop myself doing these things. It's, uh, I'm just going to darken that down a wee bit, push that out. And by the same token, I've got to do it from up here as well. Push that. What do you think so far? I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I, I, the jug was well worth doing because it really, really sets the sunflowers off. Yeah, well, it's, it's lucky that's the one I have, isn't it? I've got, I've got, an, I've got an awful boring jug there as well that uh, yeah. I, I could have used, one of these brown sort of things, but... Uh, yeah. moving them so it's the same token it's just not having a, a completely flat do you do that in all your still life kevin no in the background no no, okay. no it's just when i think of it to be honest mary i, I, I uh, do some of this sort of Because we need still need to put some uh, highlights in. Okay, so we've got I don't I want to lose that edge because it's disappearing from view. 
I want to put in a little bit more definition and hue into here. Sorry, beg your pardon. That's dark as it comes around. Put in a bit of a dark here. Push that in there. Now, uh, I need some highlights Still want to lose a bit more of that. Sorry, big bear. I'm not just going to move that. Highlights here. So the cool highlights they are, because they're coming from the windows. So that's white, plus a little bit of blue. Cobalt blue. And plus a little bit of permanent rose. Tiny touch of permanent rose, to bring it into the violet sort of space. Mm. Went a bit too far there. Okay. A bit more red. Okay. And we, we can see them. See this is this is why none of that could be so bright because you didn't want it to compete with the highlights. It wouldn't, it wouldn't stand out as much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one here. Uh, and there's a warm highlight. Is there a warm highlight? Well, actually, there's another cool one there on the handle. There. There's another cool one on the handle here. And a warm one about here. And so let's go to the so white. This is for the warm highlights. Yellow and permanent rose. There, that'll give you a bit more white there. A bit more white. It's around about here. Let's put it in there like that. Hello. Oh. <laughs> it's a... Beautiful. Oh. Okay, can you see how much paint there is on there? I can, yeah. And it, it... You do it so lightly, I, I, I wouldn't have thought there was that much paint. It's beautiful. It's really, yeah. I can see. I can see how thick the paint is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and and that is a that's a feature of painting. Yeah. Often neglected is texture, yeah. because yeah. that's yeah. what photography cannot do. No, exactly. Unless you run it through Photoshop filters or or, or whatever, and then it's yeah. 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 It's not judiciously applied by you, then, is it? It's yeah, just a, an yeah. algorithm that does it. Yeah. Um, so but it makes it more delicious, or something. Yes, that, that that's exactly right there.